All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa as we explore financial inclusion with the CBN's uh, recent um, directive to four fintech companies from onboarding uh, new customers. I have um, joining me right now Inans Isa. He is the CEO of Mabila Media. Many thanks for joining me, uh, Inans, on this uh, discussion. Let's talk about what's going on in the fintech space. Recently, just uh, uh, two days ago, right, on the 29th of um, April, the CBN came out with this directive, uh, you know, the four fintechs that were involved were OPE, Pompey, MoneyPoint, and CUDA, and it is asking them from stop, um, from you know, onboarding new uh, customers. How do you see that development vis-a-vis -vis the fact that the CBN is saying that they might be uh, involved in illegal um, forex and transactions? All right, thank you, Justin. First of all, to be on Plus TV Africa. Mm. Um, the CBN directive is positive. I love it. It's a welcome development. Mm. First of all, let's ask ourselves, what is the e-wallet all about? The e-wallet is an electronic digital cloud-based system that enables um, users to create an account online to do businesses. They are not the mainstream bank account. They are only, they create a hub, it's a system that helps you connect to your mainstream bank account. So for the FinTech company to come into existence, they, they, they discover the potentials, they used the positivity about the e-wallet and decided to capitalize on it. And most of the FinTech company made a very big mistakes. They go ahead to give you a subscriber ID, mm. which can enable you to do a direct business transaction, online financial transaction, mm. with bridging the legal financial, financial security. Okay. How do you open, uh, how do you create an account on this e-wallet? It's just your name or maybe a contact number you need to use. There are no legal documents to really back that mm. because they believe from your mainstream bank accounts, those security documents or those legal documents that carries your identity have already been added online to it, which is mm. not. So, so CBN bringing on this policy, it's the best mm. to checkmate fraud and also terrorism transactions online. Okay, but right now, it, it's like you said, it is a welcome development that people can actually transact and business uh, without having necessarily go, go to the you know, brick and mortar bank and just uh, get financial services. You know, but in all of this, now, the issue of um, you know, security comes to play. In as much as we are enjoying all the benefit of um, fintechs and all that, how do we protect ourselves uh, in terms of our deposits? Uh, because OP, they issued out a statement saying that um, you know, customers uh, deposit and their, 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 their phones are secure. But um, as a customer, how protected do I, um, am I really in terms of um, all of this? Every day we, we talk of um, financial fraud, we talk about people who you know, are unscrupulous in terms of all of this um, transaction. So what level of protection can you know, one you know, do for himself as it is? Okay, first of all, you operating on that system, there's what we call that encryption security policy, mm -hmm. which is there on that class. Yeah. designed or enabled by the company who have an access to that line company to that particular hub online so you don't have any fear but what the government is talking about right now mm. is the large amount of cash mm. on transit in the cashless society mm. you might not be aware that you are using your own e-wallet mm. to fraud or to sponsor terrorism you but how, how, how is that possible that your um wallets might be used in sponsoring terrorism or even for you know and i am not aware how is that possible yeah why this is it's like this i can meet somebody mm. someone can become my friend or i'm mm. connected to somebody mm. who says he wants to do business online. yes i want to do a business transaction i have 10 million that is coming mm. and my mainstream partner can have a challenge mm -hmm. maybe just receive this money mm. where i work presently i have a lot of people who decided not to use their mainstream bank account yes. any longer because they have issues mm -hmm. financial transactions some of them must have collected loans they don't want to pay mm -hmm. so they go to use the 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 the, 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 the other e-wallet accounts yes. if possible ask their friends to give them their e-wallet id mm -hmm. and they get the salary paid to that place which they have by court the legal security process mm -hmm. already so you might not be knowing one way or the other so we just use your e-wallet, I want to do an online production and the money is paid into it. Before you know that huge amount of money is transferred to another e-wallet, someone's account. Mm. Okay, but in all of this right now, the banks, uh, I mean this fintech specifically are saying that um, 
it is not really them that the bulk of the transactions uh, that um, are involved in these um, FX transactions are the mainstream commercial banks. Yes, that's what we tend to say. Mm. There are mainstream bank accounts. It is mm -hmm. easy for the CBN to track financial flow from the mainstream bank account mm. because they have a security back end where it's checked. But the e-wallet is different. I can transfer money from my own mm. bank account, my mainstream bank account, to my e-wallet. Okay, just like you're doing a bet. Mm. I operate a betting system. I take money from my own mainstream bank account to my betting wallet. From there, I have another option to transfer from another third-party bank or another e-wallet, which is very easy. Okay. So the mainstream bank account, my, we have that leg around says we are not doing this because mm. you don't have a trace. They use the e-wallet to do their correct trade. Mm. In times to come, there's going to be a bet of more of the e-wallet banking system in the, fin in the fintech industry than the mainstream bank. All right, it is uh, still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa as we are looking at financial inclusion and all of the latest development. Uh, Inansa is still with me here. We'll take a quick break and return with more conversation. Do join us again. Uh, welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. As we focus today on financial inclusion, I still have my guest here, Inans uh, Isa. So a whole lot is going on in the fintech um, space. Just uh, uh, a few days ago, AMBA, that's the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria, they launched um, an agent task force, you know, because lots of um, fraud and, um, you know, illegal activities are really done at um, the mobile um money agents you know spread across nigeria even some of them are not really registered and they are talking about uh, collaborating with security agents that's uh, the the nigeria police the nscdc and of course the efcc to stem all of these uh, issues in the board so uh what's your what's your you know what's your opinion really concerning all of that because we hear that terrorists are even you know financing their crimes through POS transactions. Yes. Um, it, like I said, it's a welcome development. We need a lot of um, security hubs, mm. or security uh, development, and also educational policies that mm -hmm. will help these POS agents. You know, in the first instance, we have left the bureau exchange mm. issues. We'll talk about uh, nairas and dollars, and mm. we'll come into our own local currency, which is the POS. Which is the naira on sale? I don't call it P. Yes, that's what it is. We are, uh, we are. We are. We are. That's another. That's even another point of discussion. <laughs> yes. We're actually buying naira in our own country. So it, is, and you say it's a welcome development. Not. I no. I. <laughs> that, that's that's the policy. Okay. That the all institution right. is bringing. Okay. It's a welcome development. Okay. All right. To help the POS or the naira on sale mm. agents. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. To mm. bring all of a much more understanding because naira is on sale. It you is. go to the mainstream bank, you don't see cash on ATM. Mm. You hardly withdraw cash from, you know, from the bank itself. Mm. They direct you to POS. So they have a lot of POS agencies that they sell Naira to. When you go to that point of sales to withdraw money, you are extra charged on it, which is not supposed to be so. So if the agency is going to clap on those people and empower the masses, mm. you know, you need to empower the masses. It's not just doing an underground campaign or underground security check. Mm. At the end of the day, you just come up with a white paper discussion. The masses. No, are speak of, speaking of about empowering the masses, uh, they went um, on an on the spot assessment. They did a bit of sensitization on the POS agents themselves and even people around, and that uh, they uh, their focus was uh, to. Uh, tell people to go to POS agents that are actually identified because what you find out is that there's a proliferation of uh, you know agency bankers as it is that people are not even licensed they just get even the wrong POS terminals to you some terminals are used for merchant transactions and you find them they use it for you know banking and transactions so those are the issues uh, because before now uh, Anyone can just go and say, uh, uh, can you help get POS for me? You, you get a POS and they just need an umbrella. And next thing that they are in business. I'm not saying that uh, people should not look for 
uh, sources of income, but then the right things uh, should be done as and when due. Because we need to really stem this issue in the butt. So that's where the question of KYC comes in. Know your customer, which is one of the reasons why the CBN is actually, uh, you know, wielding this big stick, as it were. You know, agency transactions, wallet banking, and everything. And most people, what they just need to provide is their phone numbers and um, okay, right now the CBN is also insisting on NIN and BVN because before now anybody could just use a phone number that's not even the end. Yeah, or even or even yeah. aside from the POS, I'm talking about uh, getting accounts on this and um, fintechs and platform. You know the uh, the more the money points, the CUDA, the OPE, the PAMPE, and uh, before you know, they start using them um, high volume transactions. So we cannot really overemphasize the place of KYC. In as much as some people are saying that uh, the the, the the requirement per se is not really necessary. But in your opinion, what do you really think? You know, for the CBN asking um, these uh, fintechs to link uh, their subscribers, you know, to the NIN and the BVNs. Yes, that's one of the major security check because your BVN and your NIN is directly con connects you to the national database mm -hmm. where they can trace you. Every information is leaked in that place. You can remember Justin yes. far back. Is it almost a year or some few months back? when the CBN directed the fintech company to stop giving loans, some registered fintech company where they gave out loans and customers cannot pay, names are published. So the CBN has to go back and resolve those crises. And that is the first stage of it. And this is the second stage we are now. Mm -hmm. Registering or creating a database of customers that is not legitimately approved by the federal government. I think mm -hmm. they are defaulters. The first thing they need to do is not just getting or using your phone numbers to create an account mm -hmm. and your user password, is to get the record documents. Either your driver's license, your national identity ID cards, and your BVN right. that will link you directly to your mentioned bank account. Okay. And there should be a two-way verification, not just to the national database, and also to your mainstream bank account to know so that your bank should your bank should be aware that this person have an e-wallet account to OP. Mm. And whatever transaction that is going on, it can be monitored. All right. Fintech has actually come to stay in Nigeria. You know, it's really bigger than other startups, agrotech, uh, farm tech, and all of that. So, what is the future of fin the fintech industry in um, Nigeria and indeed Africa? And uh, looking at all of um, these regulations that uh, have been brought by the um, CBN and all, um, by NIBS and all of that. So, what is really the future for fintech? In Nigeria and indeed Africa, the the, like, the future is great. It's big, and it's also one of the biggest revenue generation hub for the federal government in terms of tax mm. and tax dollar. So the fintech is connected to the e-commerce. You know, it drives businesses, exports, mm. and um, other uh, social uh, development. So it's key. it's a welcome idea. But mm. what we're trying to say, there should be a reform stakeholders conference. Okay to build a tangible or a legal security system to protect the interest of the FinTech Association, the customer base, and the economy itself. All right. Looking at. Okay, uh, so just before we let you go now, over time you and I have been talking about um, the app industry in the country and sometime last year you had uh, a program on that so let's look at uh, the the way forward for apps because there are lots of apps and um, proliferating even some of them might not really be licensed as it were you know especially when it comes to fintech uh, specifically uh, there are lots of proliferation or there's um, a proliferation rather of uh, fint uh, online loan apps and all of that how do we ensure standardization and then um, protection of people and so people don't just fall into you know the hands of um, loan sharks it's not bad launching your app or having a very good idea yeah. that would easy the livelihood of people and that would easy transactions you know there's no bad about that when you have a beautiful ideas you have developed it you have test run it you have seen the robustness you have seen your challenges and you are ready for business mm -hmm. follow the due process just follow due process okay yes. we'll leave it at there so uh, thank you so much um Inansa, Isa, for all of them that is for insight that you have provided on the show we just trust that uh, nigeria will actually become a hub in terms of um technology the app-based industry and um fintech uh, generally many thanks once again for your time thank you justin all right all right, and that's uh, the size of uh, the show for today. I am Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for being a part of the show. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.